Conversations from the Zoom Room. Hey everybody, Bill here. Thanks for tuning in to our last episode of Conversations from the Zoom Room featuring Jim McGran. It was a really good episode. In fact, uh, there was so much content that we had to follow up with a second. So in this episode, Jim's talking about the current state of affairs in the vision care insurance space. He's also talking about the extreme need for collaboration in order to help ECPs and chains go omni-channel to create a compelling experience. He also talks about Irish lasagna. So enjoy this new episode, Conversations from the Zoom Room. the four big managed vision care companies, what they're sitting there concerned with is one, one of the key measures in the managed vision care business is unemployment, right? So unemployment's on its way up through the roof. They've been living through these great times. Now all of a sudden their membership rolls drop way down. So their premiums are gonna drop. And then you have companies, even you know large companies saying, hey, this is great, but you know what? We're not making any money, so we're not paying you. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll be back in September to pay you some premiums, but you're not going to have your premiums. And then people are going to get back to normal. They're going to get back to work or work is going to be fragile. And there's going to be that run on the benefits again, mm-hmm. like in 08, 09. So they're going to see their utilization go up. So I think at this point in time, they're all sitting there going, okay, what does my world look like? Everybody, what does my world yeah. look like at the back end of this? But knowing from the past, I think they have some concerns and definitely unemployment and the fact that there will be a run on the benefits are, are two things worrying them so it's like well we're not going to make it easy at this point in time we're not make it easy for people to use it even though they re- that that's really what they should be doing because they should be supporting their members and their doctors as we try to try to reopen the country and, and that's why i think i think these players like anagram and and um and and, and what abb is doing with abb verify and their partner I think these are things we can look at because th- those are huge. The, the ABB verify from how it was been described to me is you're using the doctor's customer records. You go, it goes through, it analyzes, okay, who's been in? When's the last time they were in? When did they use their benefits? Who has benefits available? And then they let them know, hey, you, you, know, you haven't used your vision benefits and you've probably paid for them. Why don't you come on in? That's Those are the kinds of things that the practices are going to need as they reopen to start to bring bring traffic back in. Uh, yeah, no question. I, it's a change, changed world. So how do you think, how do you think uh, uh, vision care uh, will be totally different, um, you know, post COVID and, 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 you know, flip side of that, same side of the coin, I guess, is how does it look for uh, practices? Well, you just yeah. think people are going to react, want to react differently. So first yeah. of all, they're not going to sit in crowded waiting rooms. Uh, they are going to be uh, they are going to be concerned about the whole try on aspect. So I think you know what you guys were saying earlier. I think in office virtual try on as well as before you get to the office. Yeah. I think those things are going to be hot commodities so that there can be minimal touching of the um, you know touching of the person or or products that have been touched by others. And for for the practices, it's it's also true is that. You don't want to have one patient an hour and then after every patient you got to basically sanitize your office because you don't know what they've been touching or what yeah. products yeah. so i i just think that whole that whole flow is going to be different and then in the the exam room as well you know obviously ppe is going to be really important and uh, just to get comfortable to have people sit in the chair um, the telemedicine solutions where the doctor is remote and they can do a com- comprehensive eye exam like a a digital optometrics wow. mm-hmm. you may see more of that put in because the, then the consumer is comfortable that they know well if this equi- as long as i know this equipment's been cl- cleansed which a lot of times you know we take for granted if you go into a doctor's office you assume that's gone on and then that the doctor isn't there in my face yeah uh, just so you're aware, this was shot over a couple day period. The conversation was so interesting that we had to continue it. I didn't get much sleep. Azar shaved his beard and Jim came back with a whole new shirt. Right. The most important thing in the industry right now is is getting these retailers open, getting the independent eye care professionals open, getting the retailers open, just getting that engine going because there's you know, there's just there's a whole bunch of people missing out 
on on their one their comprehensive eye exams, but then all the things that come along with it. Um, our our head of professional strategies, Dr. Justin Manning, sent around a, a really interesting statistic. Um, in 2017, uh, independent eye care professionals diagnosed, I think it was 400 400,000 cases of diabetic retinopathy wow. that people didn't know they had diabetes. So it's like when you think about, you know, sometimes it gets we get stuck on the routine side, but it really is. It's a comprehensive eye medical exam that uncovers so many things that people are missing out on now. So getting that, you know, getting those offices open, getting that patient flow with staff staying safe and, and consumers and patients staying safe, obviously most important. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's 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 critical to get this going. I'm curious um, how uh, the guidance is coming from COA, AOA, and so forth. How HEA is um, uh, handling that, and uh, uh, you know, and helping HEA members to to reopen. Yeah. So what we've we've done, we launched earlier in this week our recovery reboot, mm -hmm. uh, led by Dr. Justin Manning, who I, I mentioned earlier, yeah. and. We're we're using a you know a time based approach and 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 Justin lays it out really well in there about you know we say if you're three weeks out from opening two weeks one week and we have a, a, a checklist driven approach to the things they should be thinking about the things they should be putting in place um, so we're we're working you know with, with ourselves with our team internal to HA, but also we have 250 you know strategic partners like yourselves. Uh, that we're, we're relying on as well to to gather information, take a look at offerings that our strategic partners have, and then making sure that the doctors, as they go through the checklist to open their practices, they're also connecting with the key strategic partners that have uh, offerings for them. And I'm curious to know, Jim, uh, when it as ODs come back uh, and they're taking longer amounts of time per mm -hmm. patient, uh, what do you think the the pluses and minuses of that will will be. I think a, a lot of the the minus side, right, is obviously getting business back to the level that it was at. Yeah. So you know where if a t some of the practices we've spoken to, right, where they typically see four or five patients an hour, if it's a single doctor location, you know they may be going down to one an hour. Yeah. So you know they're at twenty percent of what their normal throughput what was before. So the negative side is definitely going to be you know, getting their financial engine back to where it where it needs to be. I, I think the real positive that I that I hope, especially optometry, but even, you know, opticians that uh, employ optometrists, that we really continue to drive this message of the role that uh, independent eye care professionals play in the overall health and wellness of the of their patients. You know, that the statistic I mentioned earlier that they uncovered, you know, 400,000 cases of diabetes in 2017 that no one knew about. You know, that's an important role, and they could be they could be doing so much more. And, and I, I think so. It's sometimes it's either unfair or 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 how they're treated or how they're thought about, or and some of it could be just being quiet, maybe too quiet about what it is they can uh, they can accomplish and how they really can help us with our overall health and wellness. Because I, I always like to talk about, you know, that the ideal retail or independent practice that I've been in over my 20 years in the industry is that one that where you go in, you have this medical experience that you think, wow, my, you know, my eyes got taken care of and actually my overall health and wellness because of some things that the doctor talked to me about. And then they seamlessly move you into this beautiful retail uh experience that you know that you guys do so well and, and build out and you, you feel almost like you're in two worlds but you've had this seamless uh seamless experience i was talking and, to somebody yesterday in uh, connecticut and he was saying you know he felt like um he's like well we've had a 40 percent capture rate for as long as i can remember in this practice he goes there's a lot of reasons why uh he said but he said we, we've been doing a lot of soul searching in the last month and realized that we probably just got too fast in the way that we process patients through. So they were they were looking at KPIs, they were looking at all the metrics, uh, you know, spend 10 minutes with the patient, blah, blah, blah. And it was like a kind of a hustle. And they he said he started to call uh, personally a number of patients and ask him about experience. And uh, that was a common thread was uh, too quick 
it was too fast. They people felt kind of, you know, like on a conveyor belt through. So uh, right. he, said, he said they set a, uh, a goal um, to increase capture rate, you know, out, out of the gates. He's like, look, if we're spending an hour with them, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we, we want to make sure uh, that, that we're capturing. Uh, it's, a, it's a really great point, though. I think one of the couple, uh, I think sometime last year, maybe it was in October, I, pres I um, participated in this innovation summit uh, that Bart Foster put on. And mm -hmm. we, the topic was really the, the creative topic or the topic everyone was uh, doing their design thinking on was, the, you know, the eyewear experience, you know, from from exam through the purchase of eyewear or, or contact lenses. And your your point is exactly right. Yeah, no, so look, you know, we've been talking about this uh, for a while, right? That this whole process really needs to start at home or, you know, before the, before the exam. And a big, big component of that is, uh, you know, what benefit allowances I really have. And, uh, you know, we, when we talked, uh, you know, our, in our last session, that was a big topic of conversation. And I really don't see a, you know, quick, a, a quick solution for that right now, right? It, it does get a uh, sea change required um, uh, from all the insurance providers, you know, allow them to be a little bit more transparent. I don't see that happening anytime soon, but there are other things that we could start at home today. Right. right. Like, you know, for example, uh, selecting, uh, you know, narrowing down your selection, right? And what kind of styles you really like so that right. when you do come in and, you know, the, the time spent to do your insurance lookup, you've got more of a narrower idea of what you're, you know, what you're potentially purchasing. Lens uh, education, you know, why right. do you need these, uh, 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 like, the, like you, the, you know, what you described, the uh, undercoating, <laughs> the anti-glare, you know, the right. transitions, why do you need multiple pairs? So if you can arm the, the consumer in a way where they're actually better informed, I think they will, it will lead to like, you know, more uh, multiple pairs, more premium products, and yep. in a shorter period of time. So you can solve for both the throughput of the patients, you know, keep increasing that without bogging them down with uh, and being too salesman like at the end. Right, I, lo I, I love the, um... I love this, the system that you showed last time when we were speaking uh, and, and beginning right with, you know, what's your lifestyle, right? Are you, are you a runner? Are you, you know, are you an athlete? What do you, what do you do? Um, how, how do you use your eyes day in and day out? I think then it flows so nicely from that explaining, you know, explaining anti-glare, explaining anti-scratch. Uh, it's all of it is is great stuff and stuff that we require and that patients sh should be having it's just right now the process is so broken because i think people do feel like i'm being sold right or i'm being upsold yeah. and they don't they don't understand the value to their lifestyle and their yeah. their way of living and the way they use their eyes and and use their glasses so you're you guys are on to something for sure What is the best uh, meal that your mother made? Not ever. I mean, like you know, the the, the dish, the recipe. Yeah. So it's great. <laughs> it's really fun. So I am the uh, I'm the oldest of seven, right? From a uh, uh, Irish Catholic family. You know, grew up grew up in New York. So uh, it was more. You know, hopefully, hopefully there's food, and then and hopefully when it's there, it's good. It was good to be the oldest and, and one of the larger ones because yeah. you, you tended to get there first. I'd say, you know, she she had a go to of uh, like a, a pot roast and some mashed potatoes. And uh, and that was uh, like a, a big deal for us. So it was pretty, pretty basic standard food. But, you know, that or she made a, you know, a decent Irish lasagna that, you know, could feed a lot of people. So it was mostly on uh, volume spaghetti. Those types of things. Irish lasagna. I've never heard of it. <laughs> I don't even look that up. <laughs> it's just it's lasagna, but with not home without homemade sauce. You know, or um, what, what's your idea of perfect happiness? <laughs> That's it. Yeah, perfect. Perfect happiness. It's getting up every day and and understanding uh, what your purpose is. Mm -hmm. um, I went through a. I went through a, a leadership development program at one point while I was at BSP called the Global Institute of Leadership Development, put on by a group called Linkage. Mm -hmm. Great speaker Richard Leiter that talked about purpose, and and he and in his presentation he talks about um, when when he would interview execs more towards the tail end of their career or execs that had retired, he said, uh, you know, what what would they all say? And and most of them would say things like. Uh, they they wish they would have taken more risk, right? They they wish they would have 
uh, not been so cautious in, in what they did. Uh, but in the, in the end, he said, you know, the resounding thing that they all had wished was, I wished we under, I understood my purpose sooner. Because a lot of times we're all chasing that purpose, and yep. and I think if you get if you get up every day and you understand why you're here on Earth and and uh, and what your what your job is that day and what you're what you're able to do, uh, I think then you can accomplish anything. In it. Conversations from the Zoom Room.